In this class, we're going to take a look at how you solve inequations. So an inequation, unlike an equation, expresses quantities which are either greater than or less than each other, rather than an equation which expresses two quantities which are equal, hence why it's called an equation. So the process for solving these is very similar to what you would do if it was an equation, but instead of having the equal sign here, you've got a greater than or less than um, sign. So if you've never seen these before, let's maybe start by having a chat about what they mean and how we go about notating those. So we can say something like 10 is greater than four by writing it like this. So the symbol going this way means greater than for the open end. So reading that left to right, we would say 10 is greater than four, but you can also read it right to left by saying 10, I'm um, sorry, four is less than 10. So basically the sharp end means less than, the open end, the fat end means um, greater than. So you can read them both ways. If you introduce the line underneath, that means greater than or equal to. Now in that case, that's obviously not true because 10 is greater than four, so it can't be greater than or equal to four. So we would say that 10 is strictly greater than four. If you introduce a variable though, if we say that a is greater than or equal to four, that could be true. And what does that mean? Well, that means that a can be four, it's allowed to be four, but it also can be any number bigger than four. So it could, for example, be 4.1, or it could be 10, or it could be a million, or it could be any number bigger than or equal to four. But again, reading that uh, right to left, four is less than or equal to a. So these go left to right and right to left. We generally read them left to right, um, just because that's how we read. Um, but they can potentially go the other way. Sometimes you do want to think about them the other way, it just depends on the question. So that's a, that's a background for how we use the symbol. In terms of actually solving the, the inequations, we're just going to work through algebraic steps like you would for an equation. It's just that your final answer won't say that a or x is a number, it won't say x is equal to four, it will say x is greater than four. So we're going to get a range of values as our solution. But in terms of the mechanics of solving it, it doesn't really matter if this is an equals symbol or an inequation um, symbol, you're gonna pretty much do the same thing regardless. So assuming that you already know how to solve equations, I'm not gonna talk too much about how, how we would do that. I'm just gonna um, imagine that you've got that as background. So just taking that minus four over to the other side, we would get two X is less than six plus four, which is 10. So just like a normal equation, if you move the minus to the other side, it becomes a plus. All of those operations work in exactly the same way. Dividing both sides now by two, just like an equation, and we would get x is less than five. So to satisfy that original inequation, so two x minus four being less than six, we've concluded that x has to be less than five. And if you look at the numbers, that kind of makes sense. Um, but this is saying that x is any number strictly less than five, so it could be 4.9, doesn't have to be a whole number, could be 4.9, could be 4.99, could be two, could be minus 10, could be minus a million. Any number less than five uh, meets that criteria. So moving on to the second example. So a little bit more work to do here, we've got more terms. We're gonna take the x terms to the left and the number terms to the right. So we would end up with 4x minus 2x is greater than or equal to 9 plus 1. Combining those together to get positive 2x, that's greater than or equal to 10. Divided both sides by 2, oh just similar numbers we had up there actually, x is greater than or equal to 5. So just flowing through that like a normal equation to get to the solution, nothing really changed there. So here we've got a bracket to deal with. So again, just like if you were doing an equation, you wanna get rid of that bracket. So multiply the bracket out pretty much straight away just to make the terms easier. So three times four is 12, three times negative x is minus three x. And just gathering all the terms, maybe the x is on the left, the numbers on the right. So if we take the three uh, x over to the left, we're gonna get two x plus three x to give us 5x, just combining those into one line of working. And taking the eight to the other side, 12 minus eight is four. Dividing both sides by five, and we get x is greater than four over five. So that one came out to be a fraction. Doesn't matter if it's a whole number or a fraction. Could be a fraction, could be a decimal. Just like equations, you've got all those possible number types um, as your solutions. 
So x would have to be strictly greater than that number. So that number is just a little less than 1. So x could be 1, 2, 3, or any decimal number in between those, or it could be, you know, 1,000 or anything bigger than 4 over 5. So that's pretty much the technique. It's not terribly difficult. If you've already done equations, it's very similar, I mean identical really, just to solving equations, apart from one quirk. And the quirk is if you get to this point here, the last line where we make that division, dividing by 2, dividing by 2, dividing by 5, if you've got to divide by a negative number, it makes the process more difficult. So let's, in this question, actually let's spin these numbers around to put a 2 there and to put a 5 there so that we're going to force it to give us a negative number. So if we take the x's to the left, we're going to have 2x minus 5x is less than minus 7 minus 2. Combining those, we get negative 3x, and that's less than minus 9. So this is a different technique to finish this off if you've got a negative number there. It's a little more complicated. There's more to think about. So we're just going to leave that one there. We're not going to get into that technique in this class. It's not, um, it's not quite the same as how you'd finish it off for an equation. These ones we've finished off kind of just like you would for an equation, dividing at the end. We are going to divide at the end, but when you're dividing or multiplying an, an equation by a negative, you've got to be a little bit careful with your argument at the end. So generally this technique is fairly straightforward. If you find yourself in this scenario, it's a little more difficult. But you can circumvent that scenario, which we've not discussed how to deal with that, but you can circumvent it because if we take the 2 to the other side instead and take the, the 2x sorry, to that side, so x is gathered on the right, numbers on the left, then we would have 2 plus 7 is less than 5x minus 2x. Combining those together, we get a positive 9 and we get a 3x. So we don't have to deal with any negative, so this is now just like the ones we had before, but we've ended up with the x on the wrong, well, not kind of on the wrong side, because we prefer to usually have the, the variable on the left-hand side. So it still raises a question of how do we deal with that. If it's an equation, you can just spin them around. If you had the equation a equals 5 plus b, you can rewrite that as 5 plus b equals a. You can just spin that equation around, can you spin those around? That's the question. So a little bit more difficult. That's the only real trickiness about in equations, and it's the thing that makes them slightly different in technique from equations. So hopefully that makes sense to you. That's just how you go about solving most of the equation types with in equations. Just apart from that other type there, you'll need to check out a class on how to deal with those just to round out your knowledge on solving in equations.